I love hockey. I, I played it my whole life. The quiet intensity of an arena before a game or a practice. You just feel the quiet and you know that there's going to be this big roar soon. I played for Team Canada in the World Juniors in 2009 and I was a first round draft pick in 2007. I scored the game winning goal in 2009 against Sweden. There is Team Canada getting set to take to the ice. Perfect score. My whole life has been about hockey. I love everything about it. Now, two great hockey nations await the outcome of this. Ryan Ellis going back. Has it down for Nita Benico. Now Esposito with it. Rundvan lost his stick. Esposito scores! Angelo Esposito! I love hockey. Yeah. There's nothing better than showing up at the rink and getting on the ice and breathing in that cold air in the morning. It's so how many times have you gotten to a hockey rink before setting up? <laughs> Too many times to even count. When I was a kid, hockey was something that you played on the weekends. And then gradually it was something you played during the week. And then it just became a regular part of life. As a kid, I would go there every morning before school from Monday to Friday. It's funny because I didn't start out playing hockey. I have a big sister. I've always looked up to her and she was a competitive figure skater. When I started skating, it was actually for figure skating. I was just following in her footsteps. Funny enough, my dad just painted her old skates and would just hand them down to me. By the time I was seven, my dad put me into hockey, and I knew the first time I stepped on the ice that that's what I wanted to be doing. Hello everyone, I'm Stu Houston. On behalf of Dave Reed, video experts at the Brick, welcome to game three of the Super Novice Hockey Tournament here at the Ice Palace in Edmonton, the 10th annual Brick So the first time I, I went to the rink, my mom had suited me up, brand new skates, equipment. Everyone was looking at my skate company. I think it was Flight at the time and uh, they were kind of not making fun of her, but saying, what kind of skates are you buying your kid? So I got onto the ice and I couldn't skate. I was falling and I remember my mom telling me like she didn't know what the heck was wrong with me. I should have known how to skate because I figure skated before then. So my coach brought me onto the bench and he looked at my skates, they weren't sharpened. So my mom grabbed them, brought them to get sharpened at the rink, put them back on. All of a sudden I started skating circles around everyone picked up there and very nearly stolen and they come away with an Esposito now. Esposito in all alone and break with backhand shot and they score! So after practice, everyone went up to my mom and was asking her, where'd you buy your son your skates? Where'd you buy the skates? You no, know, can I get a pair for my son? And they're battling now with it. He's working against Esposito. Esposito, nice pass up there. When I was younger, I was sent to Shattuck St. Mary's boarding school in Minnesota. It's a famous school. The hockey is incredible. It was so competitive. You know, we played with guys like Jonathan Taves, and Kyle Lockposo, some top end talent. And before me, there were so many great players I attended the school. Sidney Crosby, after me, Nathan McKinnon. I mean, you're going to a place where it just breeds hockey talent. But it also put me in a position where I had to choose between pursuing major junior hockey or U.S. college hockey at 15 years old. You're so, you're so young at that age that you don't really understand what's going on and for me, my end goal was playing in the NHL. In life, you're going to have to make tough decisions. It's tough on a lot of kids. It's a lot of pressure. But looking back on it, it was something that really helped me to grow. Eventually, I decided to play with the Quebec Ramparts in the QMJHL. And the rest, at this point, is history. My pro career had a lot of challenges. My last year of junior hockey in February, I tore my ACL for the first time. Um, rehab was long. When I got back, I was playing in the American Hockey League. 
not even 12 games in, I tore the same ACL again. I got my first concussion when I was 16. I had another one when I was 21. I got hit from behind, broke my nose at the same time. Uh, my last concussion, I was playing in Czech Republic and uh, I don't really remember the hit. I guess I was in the ambulance. I kept looking back at uh, my fiance and asking her, uh, how did I play? And then she'd look at me and say, you played well. And then two seconds later, I'd look back at her and so how did I play? I don't have second, I don't have sec. I don't have regrets. Like, I remember some days going to the rink and I didn't even want to be there. Like, I'll put it this way, I was on the biggest high of my life and I went from a high to a low very fast. So if I just sat there in my room all day and didn't, you know, regret everything and I should be playing in the NHL and I'm bitter because that guy's playing and that guy's playing, I'd be miserable. I'd be so miserable. Yeah, I mean, now when I'm on the ice, I am I kind of remember the times, you know, the good times of when I used to play. And when I'm playing with my friends, it's, it, it feels like when, when I used to be a kid. It's funny, especially when I'm playing these beer leagues with my buddies and I, you know, I, I, it's just, it's, it's just a different, it's a different feeling. And you're doing a lot of teaching. It's a good feeling, it's fun. I'm on the ice with these young kids that all want to play in the NHL. They all have questions to ask. And I love to joke around. But when I'm on the ice with those kids, it's just a, it's a great feeling. And the fact that I'm helping them, you know, there's a sense of accomplishment. The kids you teach still have fun. When I told my friends and family I was going to run for the Conservative Party in the next election, almost everyone told me it was impossible. I'm far from your typical politician. I'm, I'm far from your, I guess you call it your career politician. Um, I'm new to this, I'm working hard, I'm motivated, and I just want to represent my community. To be honest, hockey and politics have a lot in common. You work as a team, you fight for your community, and you represent your country. It's still physical, but a few less elbows. So why did you decide to run for the It's just all the deceptions. Um, they said that they were going to lower taxes. They did. There's all the scandals that are going on, and they're just trying to cover it up, make us feel comfortable, and think everything's all flowers, and you know, deep down, they're not actually fixing any problems. There's a general feeling of anxiety in my writing. People just don't know what the next move is. Since I've been nominated, I'm hearing it from people that are just coming up to me and telling me that you know they're not happy with what's going on. They want to change. If Justin Trudeau gets reelected, I think we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'm super excited about the team we have in place. I think everyone I've met so far are wonderful. Uh, the first time I met Andrew, you know, he's a big presence and uh, you know, he was sincere, very easy to talk to, and I just felt that he was very honest. At Crepina, the riding I'm running in is not exactly a conservative stronghold. It doesn't matter to me. I know I can win. I don't want Justin Trudeau to get re-elected. I'm doing everything in my power to prevent that from happening. We're only a few months away from the election. I'm not in the business of losing. I want to win.